So would we like to just start talking about your earliest memories of living in the Pilliga Forest, I guess, um, and, and the, the woolly bar. How did, how did you come to get there? you want to talk a little bit about your family history on the woolly bar sauna? Well, my uncle and father had a partnership at Rocky Creek and then um, Uligal. There was a sawmill that Dad took over when he married Mum. They moved to Woolly Bar and I was nine months old. And her recollection of Woolly Bar was absolutely shocking. Wattle trees and scrub because she used to go across to Canamble. But when she got there, there was a forestry home and a family of mother, father and six kids, I think they had. And boy, did they give her a welcome. They were so isolated and they just whoopie dooed the mill coming to them. And from there on, she was such a wonderful friend. We eventually, they had a little old uh, subsidised school. There was about, Ted Taylor and a few of those came. There was about 10 children, I think. But then when the, they all started to get around and we formed families that stayed with us, really, for until the kids had to go to work. And we got a public school. And we had a teacher. And we had up to six class, and then you did the leaflets in year one. Well then I went to boarding school. But in those days, then um, Heads Mill joined up with us and we had two teachers. But I was married in the meantime. And the childhood I had in the Pilliga was absolutely superb. Dad built tennis courts and they used to have great tennis tournaments out there and they had a woolly bar cup and one of the men had made it and it was a jam tin on a piece of board and he had it engraved and to that I would love to have found it but everybody came to woolly bar to play tennis for the woolly bar cup and it was a great social outing, the women used to do all the cooking and they had a cricket team at one stage. They used to get on the back of the truck and go around playing cricket. And the atmosphere of all those people, they were just such special people. that we did, I didn't know anybody in Baradine until I came really to say that I did because we had such a mob of us out there that whenever we went we had carloads of kids and you didn't want to know anyone else. And it was absolutely wonderful, the childhood we had, but... We'd go north, south, east and west on our bikes and around Kwangdonging and we weren't allowed near the dams. That was no-no. But when that hooter went at that mill at five o'clock, we'd look out if you didn't scamper for home. And you couldn't do it now. You really couldn't do it when you think about it. You'd be worried sick about your kids all day. <laughs> but that was our life. It was free. And we had old Jimmy White with his cart and he was an old snigger and he had Dobbin and I can't think of the other old one. And he'd trot into the mill. He must have lived on the back of the cart, I think, in the bush all week. He'd trot into the mill and he'd, can we go with you, Uncle Jim? OK, kids, hop on. And we'd go to the five-mile ramp and then he'd say, OK, you lot, get off and run home. That was the highlight of our Friday afternoon. <laughs> but it was great. It really was. It was a wonderful childhood. Everybody got on with everybody. And we had lots of social gatherings out there of Crackernight. We'd be weeks and weeks and weeks dragging up logs. And then we, oh, I suppose everybody had a little bag of crackers. We didn't have much money. We had a mail three days a week. We had a grocer who used to come out from, Kenabra, from uh, Canamble. I think he came back once a month in an old truck. Oh, got you. And so uh, they would all gather and buy their groceries. Christmas time, he would bring ice cream in those big canvas things with hot ice. I've got photos of us all around this old truck, really relishing the ice cream. That was our life. And what a life it was. Now kids wouldn't do it. You'd be stuck at TV. <laughs> no, it was very carefree, very loving community. Anybody was in had anything wrong with them, everybody backed them up. We got the Italians in the war, the Italians that were in turn that they sent to us. And I always remember Henry Swaggart came and he put 
two two of them in a hut and he went back and they had a lot of tins he'd given them but they didn't know how to use a tin open <laughs> so they were nearly starving. No, we had lo lots of little funny things happen but I haven't regretted a minute of it.